we hear a a very important call out from God. Scripture says, so the Lord God called out to man and said to him, where are you? The Lord God called out to man and he said, where are you? Look to your right, look to your left, find a neighbor that, that you need to look at right away and ask them, where are you? I heard someone say just a second ago as I was bringing up this stage, is he gonna sing, is he gonna sing? No. The, the amazing talent of Kenny on the guitar, the ability to sing is something that passed me by. Not anything that I have. I joke with the teenagers uh, in youth group that I used to play trumpet, and even at that, that was the worst sound ever. Kiana, you would have been embarrassed of me playing that, that, that trumpet. You guys sounded great on that cello. Well, John Carlo, get out of here, John Carlo. What? So many different things, and of course, uh, to start us off, all of these little ones, right? To, for them to, to carry their little lights and to bow before a Savior. A Savior that from the beginning of time was always looking for us. Even when Adam and Eve sinned. In the cool of the day, the Bible says, that God looked for a man and he said, where are you? It wasn't a judgmental thing, which so many people believe about who God is. They see God, they hear about him and they think that he's this judgmental God that will hammer at you, that will beat you down, that will keep you down. But instead he was looking for them. He was doing a heart check. He was asking, where are you? are you? Because in the cool of the day, this is what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to be together. He's always been looking for us. Right there where you're at, if you'll just bow, with, bow your heads and let's pray really quick. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, God. We thank you that you always had us on your mind. There was no other agenda other than to love us. And you always tried to show us what that love looked like, felt like, and, and you always made it a purpose and a point to, to love us beyond anything that could separate us. The things that we choose to do, the things that we choose to live in, still don't separate your love from us because it's something, there's never anything that can take us away from you. Father, today I just pray that as we've heard the songs Dedicated back to a Savior, Father, I pray that there would be hearts ready to turn their lives over to you as their Savior. Jesus, we just pray that in the next 10 minutes, Father, that your word would penetrate sharper than, to any, than any two-edged sword, Father, sharper than anything that, that could ever come into our lives, Father, that it would do some surgery this morning, that it would operate only the way that you know how. Father, I just pray that your word would not come back void. There have been appointments that you set up in the beginning of time for people to be here this very day, and it's their presence that you've sought out. So Father, we just pray that your word would do all that it's always been intended to do, that it would hope, give us hope, that it would give us life, and it would give us direction. Father, we just thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, in, in the book of Luke chapter two, we hear a story, really important story, and I want to jump us there really quickly as we have about 10 more minutes. I want to make sure that we hear this story, whether you're a young child, whether you're a teenager, or whether you're an adult, I hope that you get this story deep, deep inside of you as it's communicated because the Father had always planned to do something with us. Scripture says this, in the same region, shepherds were staying in the fields and keeping watch all night over their flock. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. You can imagine what a, what a weird scene that might have been for the shepherds as they were in that field, and brightness just overtook them. 
But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts and the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to the people he favors. When the angels had left him and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And after seeing them, they reported to, to the message that they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to him. But Mary was treasuring up all of these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that he, they had seen and heard which were just as they had been told to them. You know, really, really important section of scripture. A lot of people believe or think in their heads that the wise men were some of the first people on the scene uh, when Jesus was born, but that's actually not 100% accurate. Um, the, the first people that were on the scene when Jesus was born was Mary Joseph and also some shepherds. Those wise men that followed the North Star, followed the star of David, the star that led them to the manger, actually showed up some time later. And there's reason to believe this because after Jesus was born um, and he was taken to the temple just a few days after the, he was born, he was, they, they offered something to the temple uh, and to the priests. And what they offered was not the gold, silver, and the, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh that was commonly talked about, which would have been the easiest thing to offer back to Christ or to the temple. But instead, it was different sets of gifts. And so it's even believed that the wise men never even got to Jesus until sometime later. But what's important here is not the time of when they got there or if they got there at the specific time, but that you know for a fact that the angels got to these shepherds. And when the angels got to these shepherds, they began and they started to speak to these shepherds. And what they said to them was really important because as they spoke to them, the Bible says in verse 10, it says this, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I proclaim to you good news of great joy that shall be for all people. This was the beginning of the gospel, literally the good news. Literally, the gospel translated was the beginning of the gospel message to the world. Now, before this, God had been seen as the God that was living in heaven, and if people had to have community with him, communion with him, they would have to see God in a different, in a different landscape. But this was the introduction of a savior, a king, that was here for you, for me, so that the world could have access to him forever and eternity. And this was the beginning of the gospel message that was going to be shared out to the rest of the world through you and through me. The Bible says, the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for I bring you good tidings and of great joy, which, you shall be, which shall be for all of the people. They were starting to tell the people, those shepherds, and I, I find it really interesting that he brought the good news to shepherds initially. Now, we have what we understand as a great understanding of shepherds, right? Because we hear the word shepherd thrown around in church quite a bit. And we know that a shepherd is our pastor. A shepherd is someone who tends to the flock and watches over the flock. But if you've ever been to Israel, if you've ever been to Jer Jerusalem specifically, you know that the shepherds don't have the best, uh, best reputation around, period. They actually don't because shepherds will go wherever their sheep are being tended to and wherever they're going. I remember one time we were on a bus and we were going from one city in Israel to another. And as we were going, the, they actually sort of stopped us and they said, look to the left. And as we looked to the left in the, on a hill, there was a shepherd who was guiding the sheep and he was maneuvering them and sending them to places. He goes, 
This is why we don't always like shepherds. They think they can go wherever they want to go. So shepherds didn't always have the best reputation because they would, they would take space and they would go wherever they wanted to. And it was this set of people that the introduction of the gospel was displayed to. It was this set of people, the people that were sort of outcast in, in early, early uh, church life and church understanding. It was that set of people that the gospel was presented to. Not to the high priest or to the priest and the Sadducees and the Pharisees that were set up in the temple. Instead, it was set up to the people that were looked at as the outcasts, the people that were not supposed to hear the message first. It was those people that God chose to display his heart to, to, to have his heart dis displayed and unfolded to. It was those people that he was pointing to and saying, you're the reason why this message is so important to me because it's you that I'm here for. As you hear this morning's service, you hear and you see individuals bringing their talent before Christ. They're singing their hearts out, teenagers, young men, young women, old men, old women, singing, playing a song for the Savior. Could you imagine those shepherds as they got to the manger scene and were unsure of what they would find. But what they knew was the message that had been given to them to say, it's time for us to go look to see if the savior that we have hoped for, the king of kings, if he's actually here. The shepherds decided to go and as they went, the scripture says that they found Mary and they found Joseph together huddled up around the baby. And as they were in the midst of that scene, the shepherds become aware that in that manger setting, there in fact is a king. The truth is that if you looked at my baby pictures, there'd be no way of knowing if one day I would be anything at all, much less the king. If we looked at your baby pictures, it would be difficult to gauge and look at those pictures and say, oh, this person will become this in the future. This individual will be this as he progresses in life, as she gets older in life. There had to be an immense amount of trust in what God had revealed to those shepherds for those shepherds to look at the baby and do this. That's our king. This is the savior that we've been hoping for. There's no way that in today's society would you be able to get up to that without the crown? Take the crown away because that's a, a good indicator of who's in there, right? But if you took the crown away and you walked up to that scene, that you would know that that individual would forever change the course of the world. There's no way you would know that. However, some of you probably would be doing this. I'm FaceTime live, I'm Instagram live, I'm TikTok live. I'm here on the scene where they're supposed to be a king. Let's see if this is actually the king. I don't believe him to be the king, but hey, you know what? They said this is the place to be, so let me be here. All these people coming back live. Man, that's, that's not no king. He ain't no king, man. That's a baby. That's, and he's in a trough. No way, bro. Get out of here, man. That's a mess. I know. They said he was a king, but look at him. He's just a baby with the dirty diaper. He don't even got a diaper on right now. There's no way. There's absolutely no way that you would walk up to that place and think that that individual would change the course of the world. In the garden, God asked for you, where are you? 
But in the manger, you get to say, here I am. You're my king. In the garden, he wondered what you thought. He wondered if your heart was connected. He wondered if you still knew and wanted access to him. In the manger, you get to say, I'm sorry. The distance took us away from each other, but I'm here. I'm here now because I realize that you are king. I realize that you are savior. That you're everything that you said you were, everything that was told before, I'm here, I hear it, I know it. You are the king. But some of you will be like this. I don't got a song. I can't sing a song. So I can't go to the manger because if I go to the manger, I don't have a song to sing. I don't have anything to give. Why would he want me? There's nothing that I can do. I can't play guitar like Kenny. I can't sing like Gina. I can't dance like Christina. I can't do any of that. Why would you want me at that scene? And God will whisper, where are you? Where are you? You don't have to come with a song. You don't have to come with a gift. You don't have to come with any expectations because all he's ever wanted is you. That's it. It's all he's ever wanted. He's just wanted you. Whoever you are, he's just wanted you to be right there. It was so important to him that when we failed in the garden, he had another plan to introduce himself to the world. And that plan was to shape the course of time to bring the good news, to bring the gospel. But still, in this place, some of you just came to hear a song for the Savior. You have nothing to give. God says, I've always just wanted you. This afternoon, as we um, get ready to dismiss, there's a song uh, that I want you guys to hear. A song that you guys can start to play that. Ryan, thanks, Ryan. A song that talks about you coming to the King of Kings, you coming to the Savior of the world, you coming to the manger scene so that you can be in the midst, in the middle of what he offered for you. Go ahead and turn that up, Ryan. We're in the room with the King of Kings. We're in the room. We're in the room with the King of Kings. Just a glimpse at our on my knee The Savior of the world's in front of me We're in the room with the King of Kings Jesus, you're the one who's come to me
to come to the altar and offer yourself back to him. Some of you, the only thing that you have to offer is the pain and the hurt and the frustration and the tears and the anguish and everything that has been negative about you. That's the only thing that you can bring to this altar. And God is saying, where are you? Where are you? I want you bring those tears to this altar. It's an anointing oil that will be draped on him. That's what he's always wanted. And it's something that you can bring. So this afternoon, you have an opportunity to be in the room with Jesus. To be in the scene with him. I don't care what I look like. Oh, I just want to see you right. Fear man will leave tonight. I'm letting go of all my pride. I'll love you undignified. Make the fairest to see you right I might get a little messy tonight I might dance or I might cry But I don't care what I look like Oh, I just want to see you right Fear a man will live tonight I'm letting go of all of my pride I'll love you one day get right Make the fairest to see you right
Bible says that when Mary heard the shepherds come into the room, that she didn't really say much. The Bible says that when Mary heard the shepherds, she began to meditate on the things that she had heard. A few weeks ago, Pastor TC brought a a word about meditating on God's word day and night. Mary was your, an example of when you hear a message of a good news, some of you may not be ready in that moment to respond to the good news because some of you need to meditate on it. Some of you have grown up in church and you've heard the message of the gospel and you still need time to meditate on it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with taking what you've heard today and allowing God to wreck you with his love. To take what, he, what you've heard today and meditate on it. Now for Mary, she saw her baby and she said, this is the king. And you chose to use me? truth is this, the king can be in your arms too. The savior can be in your heart too. And you can hold the savior with all that you have. And you can too meditate on what the gift of the Christ child in your hands is. Father, we just come before you this afternoon. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're a God that has always chosen to love us, who looked for us when we did wrong. You didn't come at us judgmental. You didn't come at us uh, as a father that wants to discipline their child with, with hatred or with anger. Instead, you came to us just wanting to know where we stood. And today, Father, I just pray, God, that as we hear the good news of your son coming into this world to draw closer to us yet again so that there could be a remnant of people that loved you and that sought you and chased you father you introduced your, your son into this world so that we could have life and have life everlasting so that we could choose to walk with you again in the cool of our nights instead of the cool of the night in the garden you chose this time to introduce your son into this world so that we could have a different life father this morning I just pray that every person at this altar feels the measure of your love of a child in a basket a child who was sent to one day take those pieces of wood that were on that manger scene to one day take them up on a cross for us so that you would be the everlasting change that would produce good fruit in our hearts we can't be good we don't know how to be good but when we turn our lives to you you help us to become good it was that good news that the angels said to the shepherd the shepherds that there would be good news not just for them but for all peoples of all the world Father, we thank you that that's a love that never changes. That's a love that never ends. That's a love that will always endure. Father, we thank you that you've chosen to love us. We don't deserve this. We don't deserve it one bit, but you love us. And you chase us. And you don't give up on us. So, Father, today I just pray that every heart in here that is needing to meditate on your word, Father, I pray that the meditations that they have with you, Jesus, become life-changing into their hearts, Father. Let them turn over the problems, the situations, the circumstances, the difficulties, the, the untrust, the whatever it is that's creeping up into their heart, Father, I just pray that you would just be able to take control of all of it and let them see that your hand is upon their life. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that this is a season, a magnificent season where we can remember the gift that you gave back to this world and how you love us so much. So Father, we just thank you and we pray this all in your son's name. Amen and amen.